Hello everyone and welcome back to the Atelier Nekuzuki vlog. This week I'm making needle stashers which are a fabric item that you can pop over your circular or DPN needles that allow you to like put it over top of your work in progress and keep the help keep the stitches on the needles. So here we are going through this is a scrap buster project this is actually the original scrap buster project for me. Um, we are going through and actually ironing all the pieces that I want to make uh, needle stashers out of. Not all of these made it into being made into needle stashers this week, but you know, better to have it prepped than not. I'm ironing both the exteriors and interiors. And yeah, um, most of these clips are actually muted because the kids were down in the basement with me watching their shows so that I can actually get work done. Uh, Dallas was away for work, so that's why it's muted and I can do this voiceover instead. Last week was also super tough because, well, first off, Dallas was at work and there's two kids in the house, but uh, Felix got a bug, so we had Puke Fest 2023 in the house, at least for January, um, and so we ended up actually spending quite a bit of time not in the basement. So there, this video is about two and a half hours worth of work condensed into this 40 minutes. Uh, a lot of it's sped up, obviously, but we're working through the interiors and some more scraps, obviously. Um, yeah, still working on t getting the basement reorganized, so it's still messy, but it's mostly functional. This is measuring out the fabric so that we can do the cut. I make templates out of cardstock, and so that's that piece of paper that you see me putting onto them to make sure that they're sized correctly. And then I'm using a pink choco pen that I got in Japan, in Osaka, when I was there in November. You can get these in North America as well, it's just that I hadn't, I've actually not seen these chalk pens in store. The only place that they're easily accessible for me with the kids has been Amazon. And so the yellow one I did purchase in Canada, um, but the pink is from Japan. So in this case, I'm tracing around the template. Um, that's the measurement for the needle stashers. Do, do, do. And sometimes the pen doesn't like mark first off, but you go around. And then the next set of things will be the cuts. Which, and sorry, so the aspect also changes a little bit because honestly, again, the kids are running around in the background. Um, they're always in diapers, but they're not necessarily always in pants. And you know what? They don't need to have that posted on the internet. So um, some of these will look like they were made for a full screen TV instead of widescreen TV. And that's okay. So we go around and we cut all the little bits off. Those scraps in the back there, I uh, typically give away after I get more than enough and I'm drowning in them. Um, North American fabrics, I do typically just give away instead of trying to figure out what to do with them for scraps. So here we are piecing a bunch as well. The ones that are um, smaller than half width will be sewn together and then used for a needle stasher as well later. Then they got a set of interfacing went on both the interior and the exterior. So in this case, um, the interior and exterior fabric got a fusible interfacing. Adds a nice stability because these needle stashers actually end up with a snap going through the fabric. So you'll, I want it stabilized so that it's not pulling the snap out instantly. And just kind of watch here. I've tried to speed up the bits that are kind of boring, but you know, it's, it, sometimes it's just relaxing watching someone else iron. <laughs> I like watching other people iron, so you know. Nice and steamy. And then, so I kind of smooth them out, try and make sure that bubbles are out of them, check to see if they've actually interfaced, which obviously they had not. Sometimes the glue just doesn't stick properly. 
needs more seam, needs more heat, just needs more time. With the um, buffer layer that I had at the beginning there, the scrap cotton, it can be actually harder to interface onto the, the backs of these cottons because of course it's another layer. And so many different factors, it's insane. So there you can actually see that that's definitely fused down better than it was before. Honestly, fusible interfacing is one of the banes of my existence, and I have now accepted that I'm going to need to use it. But if I can avoid it, I do. <laughs> always find it's hard to like bond, and then sometimes it bonds to some fabrics and not other fabrics. And yeah. Anyway, so these have all been lined up. Now they're getting trimmed down. And then I, Felix was playing around underneath everything, so I wanted to cut that out. And then, so this is obviously another set. Cut in between. Lay them flat so that they don't bend because the interfacing glue is very squishy. And so you don't want to be adding any creases that you can avoid. Obviously, I have a little bit of a crease in there, but I'm pretty sure I go through and I iron that back out. For the next sets of interfacing, I'm actually going to be trying the Cricut Easy Press to see if that bonds it better. Because one of the things I was noticing is that on the ironing board, and actually what I probably should do first off is try it with the wool pressing mat on top of the ironing board first. Because I was noticing that the um, fusible interfacing was actually kind of divoting into the um, ironing board. Because of course there's, it's a mesh so that the steam can free up underneath. Drink, drink, drink. And then I think I go over these with the iron again. Oh, I'm filling up so that we have more steam, of course. This is a Rowenta iron made in Germany. Uh, it does have the traditional Rowenta problems of being very um, drippy at times, but honestly it has lasted me so long. It has definitely paid for itself and it is so beaten up. The kids have ended up catching it and actually like uh, pulling it off of stuff. It's cracked, the, like, the cord protector there has been dislodged. It's nuts, but it's still going strong, so I can't complain too much. I think I've had this iron for about eight years now, and considering how much I use it, that's impressive. Steam. All right, and we're just gonna watch this clip, and then I'm going to come back when I have more to say.
All right, I just gotta say that once this clip starts, there's something so satisfying about watching the fabric layout process as like on the interfacing. Just like, look how smooth that is, so fast. Yeah. <laughs> it's always the best when I get entertained myself with my own videos. It's just kind of nuts. I'm also enjoying watching um, how long these actually take me to make because of course I've made an educated guess about how long it makes takes for me to do this but it's really interesting to see the backup of it on film now saying okay this is this is how much effort this actually took all right I'll leave you with this clip of the sped up interfacing iron and I'll be back um, again when I have more to talk about
So I left that uh, piece in because I was working in the evening so I was able to record without any of the kids shows in the background and also because it's just it gives me super satisfying brain itches and scratches myself for listening to like the fabric shears cutting through the fabric and everything like that as well as um, the sewing machine ASMR basically as well um, what you'll see me doing here actually I'm just threading the machine so that I can switch to a lighter to the white um, thread instead of black but I'm doing what's called chain piecing which is a hack I actually learned uh, very early on from a quilters magazine um, because when I first started sewing I wanted to do quilting as well I have not been able to pursue it as much as I thought I would but it this hack was one of the things that stuck with me so basically you just keep sewing um, and what the benefits of that are is that it allows me to just sew as you can see here and then it actually reduces thread waste because you're not pulling a bunch of thread out of the top and bobbin um, to cut your pieces and it saves me a significant amount of time as well as a reminder this is about two and a half hours of work cut down into about 40 minutes so chain piecing is a significant time saver for me i'll let you watch this and i'll come back when i have something more to say And I'm back. Um, I am very sorry for all the facial expressions in this clip. I'm not 100% sure what is going on with it, but you know, it's happening. I'm definitely sitting there listening to a Stephanie Lawrence book, uh, which if you want Regency Smut, I am highly enjoying them for that. Not terrible plot lines, but that's not necess That's not really what you're there for. <laughs> um, so this is just turning them all out and getting the edges poked out so they're nice and square and then the next clip is actually going to be shooting from the inside of the sewing machine arm which I actually really like this direction so this is me installing um, fabric content labels into the turn seam and closing everything up Amelia likes to help once in a while at the sewing machine obviously extremely careful that she doesn't get her fingers under anything but you can see there I'm folding in the edge to make sure that I can close the turn seam and then the fabric label goes in and we sew it up I really like this angle because it's I don't know I don't see it happen very often in sewing videos and it's actually honestly a very good place to put the phone because it's stable because the machine is metal now I don't have any sound on this clip because kids shows are playing in the background
this is a fun clip because it's just really awesome seeing them all pile up. You can see how I'm trimming the ends in between each of these pieces from the chain piecing. So it reduces, again, a lot of thread waste and also my time um, processing them afterwards as well. All right, and then the final step is putting in the snaps. So funny story about the snap press. I have had issues with the snap press since I bought it. I used to actually do snaps by hand, um, but when I was producing a lot of needle stashers, it hurt my hand so much to do them back to back, which is what always happens, much like here. Um, and it also didn't set the snaps as well as an actual hand press does because of course the force that you can put onto a hand press is significantly more than a hand, uh, like a, the force you can put on a snap press like this, like I'm using right here, is significantly more than you can put onto an in-hand hand press. This is technically a hand press too, but instead of a mechanical press. Either way, um, this was a vast improvement. However, um, if you see the top bit there, it had always, sat flush with the bottom die didn't matter what I did and when I got my new rivet press this year from cam snaps because cam snaps has a lot of options that I wouldn't have been able to do on this snap press and then I can dedicate this snap press specifically just to snaps uh, because I have a good supplier here in Calgary anyway why I that's why I have two snap presses but when I was looking at the cam snaps snap press for the rivets it has a set pin to hold the um, the presser bar up um, away, like, and keep the spring under tension. And as like looked at this snap press that I'd always had problems with because I always had to lift the um, snap press bar with the screw that's there, and then hope that I didn't stab myself with the snap as it came down because it's quite heavy. And realized that the problem was was that it didn't have the set pin. I added a set pin and it has solved all the issues I've had with the snap press and now I'm able to press in the snaps far easier. So you probably 100% did not come to this for that lecture, but that's where we're at. Um, I'm also re-recording this at about 10.30 right now. Yeah, and uh, it's been a long day, so <laughs> I will let you enjoy the rest of the snap setting with the snap press. Here is actually going to be me setting press um, snaps at night and it will be an ASMR version. I won't be talking until the very end. Thanks so much.
Thanks so much for joining me. Please make sure to like, subscribe, and share, and I'll chat with you next week. Thanks so much.